We're going to talk about the nasal cartilages today. There are only a few of them, but they're useful to know about. Um, as <coughs> somebody's mowing their lawn early this morning, it's going to be a hot one today. And this sound should actually be fairly familiar because whenever I seem to record a video in the anatomy labs at work, people are mowing the lawn as well. So, or driving buses back and forth. So no difference really. <sighs> I'm wondering. I'm wondering. I'm starting to feel like I've forgotten how to stand up in front of an audience and teach for. A morning, so I guess at least this is kind of keeping me in some sort of check habit. But I don't know, anyway, we're we're still in my back garden because we're still not allowed to meet up because of COVID, um, and I'm really missing the students and the university, and I can't wait to get back to work. But even if I get back to work, the students aren't going to be there, are they? Anyway, enough rambling. <laughs> We talked about the bones of the nasal cavity before. We talked about lots of nosy things, um, but we haven't talked about these specific structures. So this is useful to know about because I think these are the most commonly damaged skeletal structures in the head, um, because of blows to the face being somewhat common, and these structures being, you know, not as hard as bone and sticking out as well. Sticking out doesn't help, do they? And the nasal cartilages are giving the shape of the nose and in, that, in fact creating the first part of the airway. Having an understanding of the individual nasal cartilages will help you if you're trying to work out what's happened if somebody has injured pigeon, the nasal cartilages. Um, and of course these are also important in facial reconstructive surgeries and cosmetic surgeries. If you change the shapes of the cartilage you can change the shapes of the nose. I never really think about my nose that much. So if we look at a skull, you can see on the skull that there's a great big hole there. And you know the nose is there because you've probably got a nose and you know where it's supposed to be. But on the skull, we can't see the nose. So the skull is the bony remains of the head. So if we can't see the shape of the nose, then the nose must be made of something other than bone. And it's made of cartilage. And it's made of hyaline cartilage. Um, as an ex-cartilage biologist, I'm a bit of a fan of cartilage. And hyaline cartilage, hyaline means um, like uh, translucent, transparent. So hyaline cartilage, if you take these cartilages out, I mean they're white really, they're white, they're shiny, they're firm but a little bit flexible, they're a little bit translucent if you get them really thin and hold them up to the light. Um, but hyaline cartilage is forming the shape of the nose. And it's not one piece of hyaline cartilage, it's, um, well really we talk about five major pieces of, of, of cartilage in the na forming the nasal cartilages and then a few little little ones and like little infilly ones so we'll, we'll concentrate on the main five we'll talk about the little ones we'll talk about their names so we know what's what what is hyaline cartilage what do we mean when we say hyaline cartilage well cartilage is um, a connective tissue um, it's good at withstanding compressive loads, it's good at forming shapes and it's largely extracellular matrix that is components made by the cells surrounding the cells. The cells inside cartilage are chondrocytes, we have um, like few chondrocytes spaced out surrounded by lots of matrix, lots of extracellular matrix. Um, and that matrix is quite good at holding on to water. So we talk about glycosaminoglycans and proteoglycans and things like that. Um, chondroitin sulfate is a big component um, along with type 2 collagen in hyaline cartilage. And hyaline cartilage, um, so in joint surfaces, so the, 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 the cartilages covering joint surfaces is articular cartilage, which is very similar. It's a slightly modified form of hyaline cartilage, you might say, specialised at taking loads and what have you. Hyaline cartilage is firm, but a little flexible. And one of the things about cartilage then, if it's um, cells surrounded by extracellular matrix, um, it doesn't have any blood vessels in it. And it doesn't have any nerves in it. It's avascular and aneural, which is interesting. It means the nutrients have got to diffuse in. And it means that if there's any pain associated with it, it must be associated with associated tissues, like the perichondrium, the connective tissue covering it, and other. Anyway, not all of the nose is made of of cartilage, and you can feel. Okay, so you got your nasal bones up here, and then you can, you know, you can feel that it's not it's not elastic cartilage like you got in your ear, 
which has got loads of loads of elastin in it. So it's not as flexible as that, it's firmer. So it's like a firm highline cartilage. You can feel the firm bits and you can feel the structure. And then you can feel some bits which are really mobile, which are kind of their muscle and um, fibrous tissue and skin. So if you poke your own nose, that'll help you work out which bits are cartilage and which bits aren't cartilage. We can see that the opening to the nasal cavity on the skull is made up of the maxilla and the nasal bones. So the nasal cartilages are coming from those and projecting forwards, projecting anteriorly and giving us the shape. And on top of the cartilages, you can flare your nostril, can't you, your nares. So there are muscles in here, muscles of facial expression that we can use to move our nose. So the nose then is made up of um, fibrous connected tissues, these hyaline cartilages that we're talking about, skin, muscle and other bits and bobs. The five major cartilages of the nose are, well, as usual, got multiple names, haven't they? I, I would call them the lateral nasal cartilages and the greater alar nasal cartilages. Um, you might also see these as upper lateral and lower lateral. So we have left and right lateral, that's two, left and right greater alar cartilages, and then there's a septal cartilage in the middle, because you know that there you got that. Your two nostrils are formed, there's a septum. So the word septum means fence, it's a divider, right? So the, the, the whole shape of the nose is then divided into two by the septal cartilage. The word ala comes from the word for wing. Um, ala, ala, ala. Um, so it's like a wing, isn't it? Sticking out this way. It's kind of a, so, um, one, two, three, four, five. The other names then are upper lateral and lower lateral. So what I call the lateral nasal cartilages can be called the upper lateral nasal cartilages and what I call the greater alar cartilages get called the lower lateral nasal cartilages. Much more boring right? Oof. Because it skips on a few of the minor ones. Those are the five major you should know about. Now the minor ones are if there are greater alar cartilages then there should be minor or lesser alar cartilages and the minor alar cartilages they're little ditty ones and there's likely to be a few kind of a you know, not necessarily two, maybe three, four, five, little ones, they're space fillers around here. And then you might also find accessory nasal cartilages between the um, lateral nasal cartilages and the greater alar cartilages. Very, very minor, little ditty things, but you know, I've mentioned it, you know they exist now. Um, now, the septal stuff, that's interesting. Okay, so the septal bit, right, so I said that we have a septal cartilage which is separating the nose, the external nose, into left and right spaces. And if you look inside the skull, you can see that the nasal cavity is also separated into left and right spaces. But on the skull, we only see part of the picture. We can see vomer, we can see the perpendicular plate of the ethmoid bone. Those are the bony bits that are forming that bony midline nasal septum that's separating the nasal cavity into left and right. Now, the, the nasal septum projects back to a piece of septal cartilage which fills in that gap there between Voma and the perpendicular plate of the ethmoid bone to create a complete nasal septum separating the left and right nasal airways. So of course if this nasal septal cartilage is damaged then you can imagine the consequences. Also think of it structurally right, you know the nasal septal cartilage is projecting Anteriorly, you've got the other two, or the other four nasal cartilages forming most of the shape. So a blow to the head, what's it going to damage? What has been damaged to cause the shape change that you see? You know, that, that septal cartilage is, is pretty structural, isn't it, in, in poking all of this out? So a blow to the face is... Now you know the cartilages, hopefully you've got an idea of their shape. You can consider what happens with the blow to the face. And that's it. So. The nasal cartilages are made of hyaline cartilage. There are five major cartilages, lateral left, lateral right, greater alar left, greater alar right, and the nasal septal cartilage. And there are a number of minor cartilages, which kind of are variable and just fill in the gaps in between, but it's the five you need to know about. And that's it. Okay, I'm gonna stop now. See you next time.